the Army developed a bold plan to seek out and attempt to confront Southern Plains Indians during the cold winter when tribes would appear to be the most vulnerable. The battle that took place on December 25, 1868 between U.S. Army troops and Comanche and Kiowa warriors at Soldier Spring attempted to expedite that plan. This battle was a critical engagement of the 1868-1869 through 1869 winter military campaign as three different columns came together to try and subdue the Cheyenne, Arapaho, Comanche, and Kiowa into reservations in the Western Indian Territory. On November 18, 1868, a column led by Major Andrew Wallace Evans marched in from Fort Bascom, New Mexico, bringing 12 officers and 446 enlisted men along. Known as the Canadian River Expedition, these fighters, as well as six companies of the 3rd Cavalry and two companies of the 37th Infantry, set a course for modern-day western Oklahoma. They crossed the Texas Panhandle along the South Canadian River, then turned south toward the Wichita Mountains at the Antelope Hills through snow, sleet, and intense bone-chilling cold. After nearly a month of traveling, on December 23rd, the expedition came within sight of Headquarters Mountain. They had followed a weak trail made by southbound Cheyennes that were fleeing the Battle of the Washita. The trail appeared to turn southeast into the large canyon formed by the North Fork, where current-day Lake Altus resides. Evans decided to lead the men south of the mountains and in the river. During the day, they would occasionally see a rogue warrior or two, and finally managed to locate a Comanche village on the North Fork of the Red River near the mouth of modern-day Devil's Canyon. On Christmas Day, Evans marched his command northeast, attempting to find the trail as it exited the eastern end of the mountains. With a brutally cold wind blowing in their faces and snow falling, Evans decided to camp along the bank of the river, protected by the towering granite peaks to their north. Unbeknownst to the soldiers, a mile and a half east of the mouth of Devil's Canyon was a Comanche camp nestled in a grove of trees. The principal chief here was Horseback, who was friendly to the whites and disapproved of raids carried out by his people. However, he was away from camp at the time, and War Chief Arrow Point was in charge, along with Chiefs Hawea and Havywake. The Comanches had watched Evans' column from afar and hoped their hiding place wouldn't be discovered, but when it was noticed the soldiers were indeed heading their way, they decided to take charge and drive them away. The soldiers did fall back upon the initial attack, but reinforcements quickly arrived, including two sections of the mountain battery. The soldiers attacked the lodges, which were situated between the river and granite boulders at the foot of Soldier Peak. The village was plunged into chaos as two mountain howitzers fired upon them. The warriors worked on evacuating the women and children as the infantry and cavalry rolled into the village. Evans ensured everything was destroyed, teepees, food, weapons, even children's dolls and such. Just down the stream, the Kiowas could hear the gunfire and they mounted up and rushed to assist the Comanches. Large numbers of them rode in from the east, forded the river, and took position on some of the soldiers that were sniping from the rocks. The Kiowa reinforcements were able to slow the soldiers' advances while allowing the Comanches to flee. Three or four were mounted on some horses, and those who couldn't get on a horse began furiously climbing up the slopes of Soldier Peak. The remaining horseback Indians divided and rode different directions toward either Fort Cobb or Paladuro Canyon, and those on foot sought shelter among the sand dudes on the river. Evans' men, exhausted and low on supplies, wouldn't pursue the fleeing Indians, but they did destroy the village before moving on. One of the main items destroyed from the camp was several tons of dried buffalo meat, which was the entire winter food supply for the Nakoni Comanches. Evans threw all of their meat into a spring-fed pond nearby, which to this day is called Dried Beef Pond. Over the years, there's been a lot of ammunition, rifles, uh, arrowheads, all kinds of stuff have been found right there behind me where the actual battle took place at. The Soldier Spring fight was important, despite being overshadowed by Custer's attack on Black Kettle Cheyenne Village just a few weeks earlier. This was a smaller affair, with 400 or so fighters in totality and was bloodless for the most part. Three soldiers were found to be wounded, one mortally. Sub-Chief Arrow Point was the only casualty the Comanche acknowledged, but the Army stated 20 to 26 warriors perished. This battle forced the Comanche and Kiowa to seek temporary peace, and they began to realize that the winter season no longer provided sanctuary from U.S. Army pursuit. Even though they were drained, 
the Evans Command did demonstrate the ability of soldiers to be in the field for an extended period of time, enduring winter hardships on the Southern Plains. On January 18th, Evans arrived back at Fort Bascom. What took place at Soldier Spring was a successful part of General Sheridan's plan to converge on the Indians from different locations in the dead of winter. It caused the surrender of many, including Chief Moway. This battle has somewhat been lost in history. It doesn't seem to be mentioned much, even only one time in Sheridan's memoirs, quite briefly.